Tonight on Gravitas, we are asking the Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau some questions, tough questions. Mr. Trudeau, why has your country become a sanctuary for terrorists? Why are individuals who are on the Interpol's wanted list allowed free reign to spread their poison, to threaten, to promote secessionist violence in your country under your government? Do you ever give a thought for victims of terrorism? Have you forgotten the hard action taken by your neighbor, the United States of America, against terrorism? Now to a few specifics about your action over the death of a person called Hardeep Singh Nijjar. How do you know that the killer was an Indian agent? You have alleged that the person was apparently working in the Indian Embassy. Isn't the Indian Embassy and the personnel constantly under, your, under watch by your security and intelligence agencies? So how come they did not see this incident if indeed there was any such incident? Which we doubt and which the Indian government, by the way, has dismissed as an absurd allegation. Are you going to deny the fact that even Interpol has issued a red notice against Niger? And with his publicity stunt, yes, that is what we are calling it. Justin Trudeau has invited a major diplomatic showdown with what is supposed to be a friendly country. Will Mr. Trudeau tell us on what basis he has made these serious accusations? Will he explain why he supports Khalistani extremism? Will he explain why this issue seems to be more important to him than the India-Canada ties? So we have every right to ask for evidence. Where is the proof? Where is the evidence? Because, you see, we have several pieces of evidence to present to Mr. Trudeau where he enabled anti-India terrorism. In Canada, right under Trudeau's leadership, terrorism has been allowed to flourish. And he has remained silent when anti-India elements have defaced, vandalized, destroyed symbols of Indian identity. He has remained silent when Indian diplomats in his country are threatened and intimidated. Remember, these are secessionist forces. What's their agenda? To break India. They control their narrative by spreading lies and terrorizing people. And those who dare to speak out against them are intimidated and sometimes even killed. Yet, Mr. Trudeau turns a blind eye. And now Canada has become the favoured hub for these extremists. It has exploded over the last few years and Khalistani activities have surged in the last few months. And so, as it unfolds, a branded terrorist is referred to as a Canadian citizen. Yes, Niger was a Canadian citizen, but you know what, Mr. Trudeau? He was also one of the most wanted terrorists in India. He held a crucial role in the Khalistani network. In fact, he was also declared a terrorist under Indian law. He was accused of targeted killings in Punjab. He was in contact with Pakistani agents for anti-India activities. He even oversaw recruitment and funding of young Sikh men for terrorist activities. And to top it all off, he had an Interpol red notice issued against him. And despite repeated requests to take action against Khalistani leaders based in Canada, Justin Trudeau allowed Nijjar and others to roam around freely and just carry out their anti-India activities freely. Nijjar organized demonstrations outside Indian missions in the US, the UK, Germany, Canada, Australia, all under the banner of Banned Seeks for Justice. And he did this, by the way, along with other pro-Khalistan leaders such as Gurpatwan Singh Panu, Paramjit Singh Pama and Avtar Singh Khanda, who died in the UK in the month of June. And Indian agencies believe these are the same people behind the vandalism outside the Indian missions or consulates, a matter being probed by India's National Investigation Agency. Khalistani activity in Canada has triggered widespread outrage among Indians in Canada as well as among the Sikh community residing there. And they have taken to the streets in counter demonstrations against these radical elements. They have voiced their concerns to the Trudeau government. Yet, 
their pleas for peace and an end to extremism have fallen on deaf ears under Justin Trudeau's watch. And instead, he seems to be more interested in playing vote bank politics, opting for a short-sighted strategy to gain favor. Frankly, this is shocking and not what one would expect from a world leader, especially from the leader of a democratic nation. You see, here you have these fringe elements constantly attacking India, its people, its culture and its sovereignty. Yet, Trudeau chooses petty politics over the years of strong India-Canada ties that have been cultivated. But here's a critical reminder. Because a very serious allegation has been made without any solid proof. And just to keep things in perspective, Nijar was shot dead in Canada on the 18th of June. He met his demise at the hands of two masked gunmen in the busy parking area of the Guru Nanak Sikh Gurdwara in Surrey, situated around 30 kilometers east of Vancouver. But now, Justin Trudeau says his government is probing allegations of a potential link between the Indian government agents and Nijar's death. And the Canadian Prime Minister further claimed that he had raised the murder directly with the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi on the sidelines of the G20 summit in New Delhi last week. He says he has urged the government of India to cooperate. And here's where it gets ironic. They want India to cooperate. And they expel an Indian diplomat from their country. That's right. They link an Indian diplomat with the murder of Nijar. Again, no proof has been given. Naturally, New Delhi is furious. And India has rejected Justin Trudeau's claims as absurd and motivated. In a statement, the Indian External Affairs Ministry said, and I'm quoting, such unsubstantiated allegations seek to shift the focus from Khalistani terrorists and extremists who have been provided shelter in Canada and continue to threaten India's sovereignty and territorial integrity. The inaction of the Canadian government on this matter has been a long-standing and continuing concern. You see, India is not holding back and New Delhi has taken swift action ordering a senior Canadian diplomat to leave the country. In an official statement, the ministry conveyed its deep concern regarding uh, the interference of Canadian diplomats in internal affairs and their involvement in anti-India activities. And the Canadian diplomat has been given a five-day notice to leave the country. Now, it is our hope that Mr. Trudeau recognizes that this is a new India. And if Canada cannot affirm its commitment to the unity and integrity of India, if it continues to appease forces that seek to break India, then India is fully capable of protecting its own interests. Let's just consider this scenario. If India were to begin supporting Quebec separatists, what would Canada's response be? Remember, diplomacy works both ways. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the updates on the move.